Okay, here we go with the practice test answer key. Uh, try to do this in two shots, I hope. Um, we're asked to find the derivative, and you're uh, going to be using the most appropriate technique, whether it's uh, explicit or implicit technique. All right, so if you look at this, this is a simple linear equation. Y only appears once. It's easy to solve for Y. We add 3 to both sides, and we divide by 5, so I get y equals x plus 3 divided by 5, but if I divide the 5 into the x and into the 3, I get 1 fifth x plus 3 fifths. Well, when I go to take the derivative of this, uh, of course the derivative of the constant goes to 0, and then the derivative of 1 fifth x is just 1 fifth. So my solution then is just y, it's not very clear, sorry, y prime is equal to 1 fifth. All right, um, b then, similar only different. Um, we've got uh, radical y is equal to x plus 1. If I square both sides, again, I can get y by itself. No need to use implicit. Then I can either foil this out, as I did here, and take the derivative, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of 2x is just 2. Or you could think about bringing the 2 out front like this, and then uh, taking the derivative of the inside is just 1, so it becomes 2 times that inside which would give you 2x plus 2. So you can either use the chain rule or just multiply it out and use the power rule. Same correct answer for y prime. Now uh, for c, this one's a little bit different. We have to use explicit technique because we've got y appearing in two places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. When we do that, of course, y becomes y prime. When I take the derivative here, I can use the chain rule. I take the derivative of the outside, don't change the inside. The derivative of e to something is still e to that something, but now I have to take the derivative of the inside. The derivative of this is a little product rule. x times the derivative of y is just y prime, plus y times the derivative of x, which is 1. So it's just like this. Now I've got y primes right here and right here. So I need to distribute this e to the xy inside to each of those. And there it is. I've distributed it in. Now I need to isolate this y prime and this y prime to get there to be just one of them. So I'm going to subtract that. And that I have to subtract this whole element here. So I've subtracted it. And then I'm going to factor out these y primes. I leave this without the y prime behind. And then when I factor out the y prime, I get my solution, which is y prime is this right-hand side divided by the factored out left-hand side, right? When you factor this out, you get 1 minus, and then that's gone, xe to the xy, all right? Well, d then um, is similarly uh, difficult to solve for y. There's two of them, so I can't get y by itself. So I'm going to use implicit technique. I take the derivative of yx. It's very similar to the last problem. You get y plus xy prime. The derivative of sine is cosine, but then I don't change the inside, but then I take the derivative of the inside, and that's my y prime. Once again, I want to get these on the same side of the equation. It doesn't matter which. I'm going to move them over to the left. So I subtract this from both sides, and then I'm going to move the y over to the other side because I want it isolated. Then I factor out the y primes, and I get, then on the outside, I'll get the y prime out here, and it'll just be x minus cosine y. So that's negative y, then divided by x minus cosine y. All right? So that's problem one. Now, the next is calculate y prime. So um, I start off, and this is definitely a uh, candidate for implicit differentiation. There's y's all over the place. I can't solve. So I'll take the derivative of this, and I get 5 y to the fourth, and then don't forget the y prime. The derivative of this, there's no y's in there, so it's just 1 over x times the ln of that base number. Know that little fact. Then when I take the derivative of this, it's a product rule, y times e to the xy, but then inside e to the xy, just like the last problem, there's a chain rule involved. So y then times the derivative of this is the derivative of that without changing the inside. Then there's the derivative of the inside, plus this times the derivative of y, this times the derivative of y, which is y prime. Once again, it's all about where are the y primes. 
gather them up like the rosebuds in May and then factor them out. So I've moved, once I've distributed this in here and this in here, then I'm going to multiply the y in as well. And so you'll see I will get um, x, y, y prime, e to the x, y. So it's x, y, y prime, e to the x, y, and then I've subtracted it, so it's come over. Then I'm going to take this and move it over, so it's minus y prime, e to the x, y. Left behind is our log part, and then the other part when I distribute in the e to the x, y, y into this y, I get y squared. Okay, so follow that carefully. That's probably the most difficult part, just that algebra. Then again, it's isolating and factoring out the y prime that can be difficult. So here I've factored out the y prime and I'm left with the bracket part. Here's the right hand side and now all I'm going to do is just draw a line and put this underneath. Okay. On the test, if you do it super carefully and label it, you can save yourself a little bit of time. But here I have recopied it for you. And there it is, all right? On to part B. This one is an arc sign or an inverse sign. It's the same thing. They're just two different ways of written. This is the new school. The old school way is to write arc sign. Um, this is from calculators having that minus one part on their key, I think. Anyway, when we take the derivative of this, um, I will give you this template. Um, you can see at the beginning of the practice test, you need to put this as the inside part. That goes in for the x squared term. Where you see x squared term, that's the inside, that's the x, so it goes in there and I square it. And then times the derivative of the inside. The derivative of 2x plus 1 is just 2, that's multiplication. So I multiply that out front, it's over 1. And then if I expand this, if I FOIL that out, you'll see that if I bring in the minus and the minus and the minus sign here, minus one and plus one cancel. And this is the best answer. Okay. Now if you did not know to simplify it and if you left it in this form, uh, hopefully you'd put the two up above, but even like this you'd get nearly full credit. Maybe I'd give you an extra credit point for doing something extra good like that. All right. Part C here. Um, we've got a log over one plus a log no canceling is allowed. Don't make any mistakes like that. And what I do though is I'm going to use the quotient rule. I'm going to do the bottom. There's the bottom. Right there is the bottom times the derivative of the top, which is 1 over x, minus the top, sorry, the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is 0 plus 1 over x right there, and then all over the bottom squared. Well, um, don't just leave it like this. You realize you can either think of it as factoring out the 1 over x and then get rid of that. And then you've got 1 plus ln of x minus ln of x, so then these cancel. And you wind up with just 1 times 1 over x. Okay, well 1 over x over the denominator can be written like this. So there's the best answer for what y prime is single best answer. Again, you'll get major, major credit if you do everything correct, but don't simplify correctly. Alright, now this is an excellent example for why we need logarithmic differentiation. If I take the ln of both sides, just take the natural log of both sides, here it is, the natural log of y is equal to the natural log of my right hand side there. Well, this is just an exponent and the logarithmic rules are that exponents come out in front. So review those if you need to. So there it is. So now what I do is I take the derivative of both sides, and here's the derivative of the left-hand side. There's our implicit part. The derivative of the right-hand side is a pr product rule. This times the derivative of that. There's the derivative of the ln of x, 1 over x, plus the right-hand part times the derivative of the left-hand part. And there we go. Now this is simplifiable right there. That is going to cancel an x. I get x squared. Then here I've got the 3x squared, and then it's times to get y by itself. I'm going to multiply both sides by y, and that's what y is equal to right there. So I'm done when I get to this stage. But again, if you want some extra credit, look at the possible ways it is to simplify. What I've got here is x squared, and if I factor that out, x squared, if I multiply this times x squared, it's just x to the third plus 2. So there it is, x to the third plus 2. You add exponents. 
So that's, again, that's the A plus answer. Um, that will be the A minus answer. All right, on to part three. Here's a quick scan of all the answers, just so you can check your work. In case I missed anything, some of it was chopped off. <laughs> 